Okay, thank you, Peter. Let's turn to our Bibles and um, turn to the book of Hebrews. And uh, my thought is tonight, are we, are we ready? I don't think I am, I'm still looking for Hebrews. Um, Hebrews chapter 6, but um, I want to just, just read the, the, <coughs> the tail end of chapter 5, where it... Uh, <coughs> He's talking there um, for, from verse 12 onwards. For, for when, for the time, you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles <coughs> of the oracles of God. And it becomes such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For, every, even, uh, for everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of the righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat develop, uh, de belongeth to them. They're of full age, even to those by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And <clears throat> really, Paul, Paul we, we believe it was Paul. Maybe others don't believe that Paul wrote Hebrews, but who cares? We'll say tonight he, uh, Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And uh, Paul was writing here to, uh, to the Hebrews or, or Jewish-type people and uh, if we read the book of Hebrews it's sort of relating to Jesus Christ where he fits in so they can sort of understand and really he was saying here it's time you sort of actually got what you're about and so in verse in chapter 6 was where I wanted to get to in verse 1 therefore leaving the principles of doctrine of the doctrine of Christ let us then go on under perfection, not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of doctrines of baptisms and of laying on of hands and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. Those principles, in effect, are what we believe in our fellowship. Those principles that uh, Paul wrote there, that... Uh, uh, the, the doctrines of Christ, uh, laying a, again the foundation of repentance. We believe in repentance, faith towards God, doctrines of baptisms, baptism in the water, baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, and laying on of hands, healing for the for the sick, etc., etc., and the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. That's our doctrines in a nutshell. And that's what Paul was trying to to get through to these people. That okay, you've been around for a while, you've been um, involved in, in you know he's sort of saying you've been involved in the fellowship there, uh, where wherever they were, and uh, he was saying it, it's now time you actually should recognise where you're up to, and. Uh, uh, recognise these principles that, uh, that that are written down here. These things. So we uh, uh, and, and at times we sort of think, well, here I am. I come here on a Sunday, on a Wednesday. Sometimes I turn up on a Saturday to do something, and I go to the revival fellowship. Big deal. And that's really what Paul was talking about. It's all right just to do those things, but it's now time to, to as he was saying here um, in, in verse 14 of chapter 5, um, even those by, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So what he was saying here, you go, you go out and you come up against things and what are you going to do about it? And things that come up in life and so on and he was saying it's the same with the gospel. Okay, you've been baptised. Okay, you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. People have laid hands on you and so on. All those sort of things happened in this fellowship. It's now time to... You've, you've, you've established that. Now let's move on. 
to what we what we're about, what we're doing, and so on. And and, and sometimes uh, we might turn over to the Proverbs now, chapter thirteen of Proverbs. But we, uh, in the meantime, sometimes we get sort of a a bit sidetracked in uh, in our life and thinking, well, we're here, we uh, we'll go to church on Sunday, and and uh, that'll do. In uh, Hebrews, no, we've been there. In Proverbs in chapter 13, only one verse here, verse 4. He's talking here, the soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. So the sluggard um, is, a, is, a, is a slug, and a slug's a snail without a home. Uh, so... It, it's really talking here of of someone that sort of just we can imagine we can imagine a snail or a slug they they move around fairly slowly and the scriptures are saying here the soul of the sluggard the uh, is, is desirous things and oh, I wouldn't mind if I could do that do this all that sort of stuff and don't actually get anywhere. And the Lord is uh, is a bit concerned about it. If we go over to chapter twenty four, Proverbs twenty four, Proverbs chapter twenty four, and verse uh, verse thirty, we read here. I went by the the field of the slothful, or the sluggard. You could put the same word in if you wanted to, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles and covered the face thereof. And the stone wall there was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction, yet in a little sleep and a little slumber and a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thy want as an armed man. And uh, here we see the, the Proverbs are writing here uh, and, and sort of a warning us if you like and sort of painting a picture of uh, walking past a paddock or a field as they're saying here and, uh, and a vineyard uh, and it's sort of, everything's sort of broken down because there's nothing, nothing happening and uh, really it was referring to our lives and what we do in our life and how we sort of behave in our walk with the Lord and etc and, uh, etc cetera, et cetera. And uh, sometimes we fall into the trap, as I've said a little bit earlier. Um, <clears throat> we uh, we think we come along here, and 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 that's fine. But I think, as Peter, I think Peter said a little bit, or someone said a bit earlier, that today is the day of salvation. And sometimes we tend to forget that. That you know we'll sort of think about what we're going to do in. 20 years, 30 years time how we're going to work, where we're going to live and what we're going to do and, and our mind is on that sort of thing and, uh, and, and you know we, with the story in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, the Gospels about you know, you know he, making your barns bigger and bigger and getting organised in life tonight your soul is required where do we stand? And, and really, it's the same here. We, as, as Paul was writing to the Hebrews and saying, yeah, "Okay, okay, you've laid and, and established the things in your life. These things: baptism, laying on of hands, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, we know the end, the eternity. There's judgment, all that sort of stuff. But what about your everyday life?" What about happens, you know, what do we think about, um, you know, down the track a bit? Are we going to be around? And, and, and sometimes we don't sort of think of that, that maybe tonight we fall off the perch, if you put it nicely. And that's really what the, 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 the uh, little story in the, in the Gospels was about. Tonight your soul is required of you. And uh, I remember... Um, 
was only a couple of years ago I was had a stent put in my heart and uh, the professor who was doing the job there uh, and he said he checked all the others because I had a double bypass back in the 2009 and he checked all that sort of stuff and he said oh yeah he said you'll be right for the next 20 or 30 years oh that's good it sounds nice so I lived to about a 90 or a 100 that's probably a bit long for me but never mind that'll do and uh, <clears throat> But I had a, two specialists told me, when you have a, 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 a bypass operation and a stroke, and I've had two strokes, they said you can take five years off your life for each one of those. So I've got the body of a 90 year old, or nearly 90 year old now. So you think, hang on, how, how much longer have I got here? Sort of thing. So, and, but one's telling me I'm okay for this. So I'm all right for the next 20 or 30 years, so don't worry about it. You, I'll still be around. I may not know who you are, but I'll be around the place. Um, but it's it sort of, you know, we, we, we have all these sort of things told to us, you know, that, you know, you're going to live for the next 20 or 30 years or, or, or whatever, you know. And I, I, I do remember when I was in ICU one night in uh, Flinders, uh, in, the, in the place there, in, and... Uh, lying there and they brought a man in into there that had obviously had trouble with his heart um, and uh, a man that I actually knew or you know acquaintance dare I say but um, you know I was sort of roped down to all sorts of things happening with me and they wheeled him in and I could hear them talking to him the doctors and they said there's nothing more we can do you will not be here in the morning and he was wept bitterly. And uh, it really sort of struck home to me that we go along in life and all of a sudden your soul is required of us. If we go over to the book of um, Matthew and chapter 25, we we'll lighten, the, lighten the mood of it now, just that I've got your attention. You can step back out of the grave. And uh, we see here, it, it, it does get a little bit better, I think. But in Matthew 25, verse 31, we talk here, and we know this story particularly well, I think, most of us, talking here of, from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit on, upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall she separate them from the, one from another as the shepherd divideth his sheep and from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer and say, Lord, when saw we hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? <clears throat> when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in? naked and clothed thee or when saw we thee, uh, thee sick or in prison and came unto thee and the king shall answer and say unto them for verily I say unto you insomuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren you have done it unto me <coughs> and we see talking about the, the end of the age at the, in this particular uh, story here as Jesus talking and uh, he was sort of highlighting right at the end. Um, and, you know, there will come a division at times at, at one point, and the sheep over there, and the goats over there, and there'll be judgment. And the ones over here, the, the sheep, and we're talking here of spirit filled people. We're not talking everybody and their dog as well, but we, you know, they, all the nations have to. But we're talking here, particularly, particularly if you look early in, earlier in chapter 25, 
we're talking about all spirit-filled people and uh, some of them just let the oil run out but here uh, he was talking to the, to the sheep and saying you did these things and we're thinking how did we do that I don't remember visiting anybody or whatever and he, <coughs> as he said as he said <coughs> in verse 40 you've done these things unto the least of my brethren and, we, and, and therein is where we <coughs> excuse me uh, wherein we start to establish ourselves beyond just laying the foundations as we read about back in Hebrews you know laying the foundations of, of all those things we spoke about and Paul said now it's time to move on from that and, and really that's when we see this story here this is where we need to fit with the sheep because <clears throat> that's where the, they enter as he said there um, <clears throat> into the kingdom the ones on the right hand into his kingdom and uh, we're thinking what, what can we do as he said there you've done this to the least of my brethren what did they do all those things that, we, that he listed off and uh, you know gave them meat and drink and took them in and clothed them and made them visit them and so on and so on and so on and uh, I don't believe he's talking about we, we rush out and, and make sure everybody's got nice clothes or a new suit or something or if you want to buy me a new suit you can but you don't have to it's not really talking about that it's talking about our care one for another do we care one for another and do we look after each other and we think how can we do that well just being here tonight is one of those factors if you're sitting here in the meeting you're sitting with uh, your brothers and sisters and this is where we should be we should be as the book of Hebrews talks about not forsaking ourselves as some of the others do in the you know particularly as the day approaches don't don't hold back from fellowshipping one with another being together and just in a meeting we're singing choruses together we're praying together we're hearing the word of god together and we're looking around and, and these are my brothers and sisters and in, in these sort of circumstances we can think oh, I'm alright you know I can, I can uh, I've dri driven here and no problems in life and uh, I'm uh, getting on with things but there's others sitting here or tuning in that are struggling in life and just to be sitting here with you know a, a hundred or so people sitting here with them singing choruses together is very, very inspiring for those people. Those little things, doesn't, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with ringing, you know, we, we, think, we talk about ringing people up or dropping in to visit and all that, which sort of comes under that, but just simple things like being here tonight, being here on Sunday for both meetings, it's very encouraging for other people and should be for all of us and that's the sort of thing he's talking about here just making sure you know the, the adverts on TV and the radio and so on are you okay sometimes it's nice to say that to people are you okay because some people put a big smile on when they're sitting here or walking around here but when you sit down and say are you okay they can almost collapse no I'm not and which is typical of human nature uh, we don't want to sort of get too carried away and tell everybody my woes sort of thing but just little, simple little things like as I say being in the meeting just 
you know, ringing them up. That's really what he's talking about here. He's not running around and, you know, <coughs> running a, 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 setting up an op shop or and saving the, you know, the whales or the whatever you want to save, all, all that sort of stuff. And, and the world has got involved in that and sort of got a bit sidetracked. There's nothing wrong with, with you know, providing things for people who are in, in difficulties and so on. I was watching a program sometime this week, I forget what night it was, it was quite late. It was about um, older ladies that are homeless. And it was pretty staggering actually. There was 405,000 ladies over 55 that are homeless in Australia. 405,000. And uh, they interviewed a few and uh, sort of followed them around a bit. It was quite a confronting program when you think about these, these ladies. And, uh, you know, they're on their own. And s some of them were uh, out, in the, out in the scrub and way out, when I mean right out in the scrub, um, just on their own in a little van. Some of them in their car just pulling up next to the, near, down by the beach or somewhere lonely on their own. And <clears throat> maybe there's people around us, people that down the street from us are in those sorts of circumstances. Maybe they've got a, a home, but there's a lot of difficulties in the home. Maybe we can go and just say good day to them, invite them for a cup of coffee. That's the sort of thing he's talking about here, just little things. You don't have to blast them or anything about the gospel. Just be kind to them for a while and give them a cup of tea or coffee and even invite them around for a, for a barbecue or something just to see how people are. Are you okay? And really, when we see the difference between the sheep and the goats, is that simple looking after one another. The goats were probably looking after number one. And, and really that's uh, you know, one of the, the great things. We read in the uh, um, book of Galatians, let's go over there just for a minute or two. We've only got a minute or two. We've got to throw me off. Hang on a minute. Um, Galatians chapter 6, and it reads here, <coughs> down there in, uh, in verse 6 of chapter 6, let him that is taught in the word communicate or talk unto him that teaches in all good things. Talk to one another, that's really what he's saying here. Be in, in contact with one another. Be like it is here tonight, sitting down, hearing the word of God, praying together, singing together. There's nothing better. And it uh, brings joy to our heart when we sit here. If we sometimes we're sitting home and we're a bit down at the dumps, the best thing you can do get to a meeting somewhere, house meeting, wherever you know. Come along and and sit in here. If you sit here and hear the singing tonight, you know I was sitting up here. It sounded pretty good to me. It was quite loud and people were keen and it even sounded nice. I'll carry on. <laughs> it might have been Dr. Graham Pater, I see. It might have been his voice coming out. Well, that was a bit muffled, so it may not have been. Yeah. We, we see here in verse 8, <clears throat> no, verse 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also weep, reap, weep as well, but also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. That's where we head, is walking in the Spirit and not in the flesh. Don't be deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever we do, and really the, the, when we look at the, the life of Jesus and when his first ministry first started, it was all about mercy and not sacrifice the love of the brethren as uh, Peter wrote in the epistles love the brethren those are the sorts of things that we talked about in Matthew chapter 25 
Because we finish in chapter 24 of Matthew. And uh, just a couple of verses here. As I said right at the beginning, are we ready? And really, sometimes we can just sit back in the meeting and think, I'm okay, I'm here. And that's not all, though. And that's really what Paul was getting at. It's time to think about other people, think about other situations, people within the fellowship, people outside. Have we got an opportunity to preach the gospel? Have we made an opportunity? Have we invited someone new to around for a barbecue or just to say hello uh, here and there? Just a, a, year, a few years ago, I, uh, we've done it a few, a couple of times at home, and um, I just make a little um, thing up, little invitation up on my computer. I'm very highly skilled in that capacity, and. Uh, <laughs> I cut them all up and just little invitations went up the main street coffee and cake at the Hilders nobody turned up <laughs> serve them right but we did get two two apologies uh, so they did think about us but just little things it's, you know it's worth a try you never know who's going to turn up you know you don't have to bring your, just come around if you bring your beer who cares as long as they don't get too nasty so you can just talk to people about the world, about the world situation, about what can change in their life, about Jesus Christ. And that's the sort of thing Paul was talking about in the book of Hebrews. We've established ourselves in the, in the, in the doctrines. We know what we're talking about. Let's go out and do it. And that's really what he was saying. And because in Matthew 24 and uh, verse 42... We read here, <clears throat> Watch therefore, you know not what hour your Lord doth come. As I was saying earlier, we think we've got 30 or 40, 20 years, whatever, we may be required tonight. And that's what I'm hoping no one takes that literally. But it, it, spiritually, that's what we've got to think about. Am I ready? Verse 43. But know this, in the good man of the house have known what watch the thief would come. He would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Don't think we're waiting for the Lord to come back, because you might get run over by a number nine bus tomorrow. We, we, we sometimes we talk a lot about waiting for the Lord to return but maybe that may not happen in, we may see the, you know we may get the, get the jump on others we may pass away before that once again are we ready have we done what is required we've established ourselves the next step is the care of the brethren and the care of those people out there all the people said. Peter. <clears throat>